Hey, what's up everybody? Mr. Murray here, Mr. Murray's Mathland. Today we're taking a look at everybody's favorite topic, complex fractions, uh, aka fractions within uh, a larger fraction. And you should never leave a complex fraction as a final answer. You should always simplify that. So um, we're going to talk about two different ways, actually, to simplify them. And it doesn't really matter which one you use. It all gets you to the, to the end if you're good with it. So uh, the first method I'm going to talk about is uh, simplifying the top and bottom kind of uh, separately, meaning in the numerator here you have 3 over y squared minus 12 over x squared y squared. Let's treat that like a problem. Uh, make common denominators so that I can subtract these two and put them together to make one fraction. So to make common denominators, pretty easy. I would have to multiply this one by x squared, which means you have to multiply the numerator by x squared. And then that means I'm going to get up top, I can put them over that common denominator of x squared, y squared, and I'll have 3x squared minus 12. Okay, now those can't be combined, so kind of mission accomplished there. And then in the denominator, I have uh, 2 over xy plus 1 over y, so I need to multiply this denominator by x so that I'll have the same denominator of xy. Of course, you got to multiply that 1 by x, and so you'll have 2 plus x there. 2 plus 1 times x is x over that common denominator of xy. Okay. Now, here's the thing. Once you get to this point, you've got a single fraction divided by another fraction. This is where you can take the first fraction and multiply by the reciprocal of the second, right? That's how you divide two fractions. So 3x squared minus 12 over x squared y squared, that's the top fraction there, the numerator, multiplied by the reciprocal of that denominator, the one we're dividing by. So the reciprocal of that would be xy over 2 plus x, or x plus 2 if you prefer. Now when you multiply, uh, fractions, you pretty much just multiply straight across, top times top, bottom times bottom. However, you want your fraction to be completely reduced uh, in the final step. So rather than actually multiply this out, you might want to factor everything either right now or after you put them together. So if you put them together, you'll get xy times 3x squared minus 12 over x squared y squared times 2 plus x. Notice how I didn't actually distribute it because I want it to be completely factored so that I can cancel any common factors they might have. And already I can see I can cancel you know, this x with one of these x's, this y with one of these y's. But uh, I also want to factor that numerator. I notice that factors a little bit further. So I can take a 3 out of there, and I'll have x squared minus 4. And then that x squared minus 4 will factor further to x plus 2, x minus 2, a difference of two squares. So when all is said and done, I'm going to have 3. When I just push that out in front of the xy, x squared minus 4 factors to x plus 2, x minus 2, all divided by x squared, y squared, and if you'll notice, 2 plus x is really the same thing as x plus 2. So you've got a common factor there as well. So let's cancel common factors. 2 plus x, x plus 2, gone. We said this x can cancel with one of the ones in the denominator, this y cancels with one of these in the denominator. So my final, final answer is 3 times x minus 2, that's what's left in the numerator, over xy, don't forget there's still xy because you only canceled uh, one each, and that's really it in the denominator because the 2 plus x canceled. So there is our final answer. Feel free to distribute the 3 if you like, but a lot of times you'll leave these in factored form so you can see that there are no more common factors that can cancel. Okay, so that was method 1, which is make common denominators, but you know, so that you can 
combine the numerator into a single fraction. Do the same with the denominator so you can make a single fraction and then multiply the top by the reciprocal of the bottom. The slightly faster way, and it's, it's kind of personal preference, the slightly faster way is to clear all of the little denominators in one big step by just multiplying the top and bottom by the LCD, the least common denominator, of all the little fraction denominators. So if you look at all four denominators right here and think about what's the LCD for all denominators, and I'm going to multiply the top and bottom of the overall fraction by that LCD. So what is the LCD uh, for all of these? It's going to be x squared, y squared. We've kind of already determined that for the numerator. And do I have to add anything additionally? No, because x squared, y squared would also take care of these. So I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by x squared, y squared. Now when you do this, you can go pretty fast if you're comfortable with your algebra, but you're going to distribute this to each one of these fractions. And so if you've done it right, every little denominator should cancel. <clears throat> when I do that to here, see x, y will cancel. When I do it to here, y will cancel with one of those. So here's what we're going to be left with when we do that. When I take this x squared, y squared, and I distribute it here, just picture putting it right on top of that y squared. That y squared is going to cancel, and you'll be left with 3 and x squared, right? Because if you take that x squared, y squared, when you distribute it, y squared will cancel with the y squared, but you'll still have that x squared from the LCD. When you distribute that to this fraction, x squared, y squared will cancel, and you'll be left with nothing. So you'll be left with just the minus 12 that's up there. Boom, so we got 3x squared minus 12 denominator is gone. Now, do the same thing. Distribute this to each of the fractions in the denominator. And again, if you have to write it there so you can really see what's going to cancel and what you'll be left with, xy will cancel, and you'll be left with 2xy. Plus, what happens when you distribute it here? x squared, y squared, the y will cancel with one of those y's and you'll be left with 1 times x squared y. Now factor everything and cancel. So that 3x squared minus 12, we've kind of already seen that here. You take the 3 out, you got your difference of 2 squares, x squared minus 4. So 3 times x plus 2, x minus 2. And in your denominator, I can take out xy. And when you take xy away from each, you'll have 2 plus x. And there we go, that same thing that we saw earlier, 2 plus x, x plus 2 cancel. And what are you left with? 3 times x minus 2 over xy. So it's slightly faster if you compare the, the work. And it's just depending if you are comfortable with, with this first step of where you distribute and cancel and you know, you're okay with that. I don't know. Sometimes that bothers people. But to me, that's the best way, and that's the way I'm going to do the next two problems, just so you see some more examples of this. So maybe if you're on the fence of which way to do it, you'll be kind of a, you know, swayed to, to what I think is the better of the two methods. Okay, so number two here. In this case, The denominator of the overall fraction, x minus 4, doesn't have a denominator. So it's just a 1 there if you prefer. So I'm going to multiply, like I said, the top and bottom by the LCD of the small denominators, which would be 6, x plus 8, and of course 1. So I don't really have to worry about the 1. So that would be 6 and x plus 8. 6 and x plus 8. I'm going to distribute that to each one of these. Just picture when you put that right on top of there, and right on top of there, what's going to cancel? The 6 is going to cancel, and you'll be left with x times 
x plus 8. You now, x times what didn't cancel? x times x plus 8, and then you'll have a minus in the middle. x plus 8 is going to cancel with x plus 8, but you'll be left with 6 times the x plus 4 that is up there. Right? Picture putting that right there. The x plus 8 cancels. You're left with 6 times the x plus 4 that's already there. In the denominator, nothing cancels because that's a 1. So I've got this, 6 times x minus 4 times x plus 8. Notice how I'm not actually multiplying these out because this denominator is now completely factored, right? It's a product of those three, so the denominator is fine. The numerator, however, be careful, it's got a minus in the middle. This is not factored form, so don't think you can cancel x plus 8 and x plus 8 x plus 8 here is not a factor of the entire numerator. Uh, so you have to actually multiply these out, multiply these out, and combine the like terms to make one new numerator here. So x times x is x squared. x times the 8 is 8x. Now distribute this negative 6. We get negative 6x minus 24. Yeah, watch that. It's a minus there. That gets distributed. Combine your like terms, and in the numerator now you'll have x squared, 8x minus 6x is 2x minus 24. See my denominator is completely factored, so that I will just leave as is. If you want to multiply it out, great, you'll just refactor to this in a minute. But you see now your numerator, after you combine your like terms, you've got a new trinomial that you haven't had before. You made that new trinomial, and now that can be actually factored. This doesn't always work um, <clears throat> where, it, where it actually you know, always refactors in the end, but it's something you've always got to look for to be completely reduced. So what multiplies the negative 24 but adds it to positive 2, that would be positive 6, minus 4. And that means that we've actually got a common factor we can cancel, x minus 4 and x minus 4. And we are left with x plus 6 over 6 times x plus 8. Again, if you feel like distributing that 6 to that x plus 8, that's fine. That would be perfectly acceptable, but it's uh, totally fine to leave it in factored form like this because you can see it all stripped down and it does not simplify any further. Just be careful. Do not think you can cancel that 6. We'll say that 6 right there. That is a term. You can only cancel common factors. So if you need to add the set of parentheses around here to you know, remove that temptation, Remind yourself, this is a this is a package deal here. Uh, you can't cancel anything unless you have another x plus six. Then then do so. Okay, one more example here. Hopefully you're getting the hang of this. Uh, and this is another one that's got four denominators, but notice they are uh, polynomials, unlike the first example I did. So if I want to take the same approach of multiplying by the LCD of all four, I've got a factor those four denominators, if they're not already. And first denominator of x squared minus 9 factors to x plus 3, x minus 3. Now i got to see what these are made up of, so I know what to multiply by to make them cancel. x squared minus 2, x minus 3 factors to x minus 3 and x plus 1, right? What multiplies to negative 3 adds up to negative 2. That's negative 3, positive 1. The denominator here, 4 over x plus 3, x plus 1. And this binomial here is already factored, right? It's just a single factor there, x minus 3. So now, and that's the same approach, by the way, you'd want to take if you're of the school of thought that you like to, you know, I'm going to subtract these two fractions. Well, you need to make the common denominator and you need to factor those denominators to see what they're made up of so you know what to multiply by. So that first step is, is the same regardless of the two methods, uh, which one you're using. But I'm now I'm just going to get rid of all of these denominators in one fell swoop here by multiplying by the LCD, least common denominator for all four. And so you look at the first denominator, definitely I'm going to need an x plus 3 and an x minus 3. You look at the second denominator, x minus 3, I got that covered. x plus 1, that's a new one, I need that. Look at the bottom, 
x plus 3, got it covered. x plus 1, got it covered. x minus 3, got it covered. So this is your LCD here for all the denominators. And now when I distribute that, it should make all the denominators cancel. And so in this first fraction, you distribute x plus 3, x minus 3 is going to cancel. But what will you be left with? x plus 1 times the 10 that's already there. 10 times x plus 1. And I'm going to have to multiply that out. So if you already want to do it, go for it. When I distribute this to the second fraction, what's going to cancel? And what are you going to be left with? x minus 3, x plus 1 cancel. But you'll be left with x plus 3 times that negative 5 that's already there. Negative 5 times x plus 3. Take a look in the denominator. When I distribute this, x plus 3, x plus 1 is going to cancel. x plus 3, x plus 1. You'll be left with the x minus 3 times the 4 that's already there. I'm basically just looking at what does the numerator, you know, or, or what did the denominator not have from this LCD. And that's the thing, x minus 3, that you need to give to the numerator and then just cancel the denominator. Plus this one, x minus 3, is going to cancel, but that means you'll have x plus 3 and x plus 1 times that 1 there. So here's what we got just from that first step of canceling all those denominators. Now it's time to multiply out, combine your like terms, and try to refactor here. So in this numerator, 10 times x plus 1 is 10x plus 10. Negative 5x minus 15, let me distribute that. The denominator here, 4x minus 12 plus, and right here you've got to actually foil those two things out. You should be adept at that by now in this, this stage of your uh, math career. Uh, x plus 3x plus 1, we did actually already have this combination. It's If you foil it out, it's going to give you x squared plus 4x plus 3. And combine your like terms, you know, clean this up, be slow and steady, don't make any silly mistakes. So in the numerator, 10x minus 5x, 5x, 10 minus 15, minus 5. In the denominator, x squared plus 8x minus 9. And it's looking a lot cleaner already. The only question is, can we go further? Well, only one way to find out, factor everything now. So this numerator, I can take out a factor of 5, greatest common factor there. You have x minus 1. Your denominator is a new trinomial that factors to x, x, what multiplies the negative 9, adds up to 8, positive 9, minus 1, which really, these don't happen all the time where it works out and does this, but I intentionally chose some examples where it does. So you can see, you want to multiply out, try to make these new numerator denominators try to refactor if they can and if they do cancel and what are we left with 5 over x plus 9 and there we go there's our final final answer so three examples there of handling complex fractions using the lcd method hopefully you feel a little more comfortable with it if not feel free to ask questions and i can give you more examples so have a good day and keep working hard